All right, in this video, we're going to work on trigonometry. So uh, I always start by identifying the angle and the sides. So the angle measures the angle between two of the sides, and it's always measured in degrees. So this is my angle theta. All right, the next thing I can do is identify the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse is the longest side, and it's always opposite of our right angle. So this is going to be my hypotenuse h. Following that, I always label my adjacent side. The adjacent side is the one that touches the angle. So the angle comes down and it touches this side right here, and that's my adjacent side A. The adjacent side is usually horizontal, so running left to right, but not always. We'll look at an example of that in a little bit. All right, and then finally, I'm left with my final side, which is my opposite side, and I'll label that O. The next thing I want to do is go over and look at my equations. So I know h and theta. So let's look for an equation whose original form has h and theta in it. And actually my first one here has h and it has theta. That means I can use that equation to solve for the unknown. So I'll use the first manipulation of it, O equals h sine theta. So let me go ahead and write that down. So O equals h sine theta. And so I can plug in O equals H, which is 3.20 sine of our angle, which is 36.0 degrees. All right, if I plug that into my calculator and make sure that I'm in degree mode, I get an angle, or I get a side length of 1.88. And I can write that down for O. I feel good about that because it's smaller than my hypotenuse H. All right. Then let's look for an equation where we can solve for A and we have our unknowns. All right, so I look now and I see that A, H, and theta are in my cosine equation, and I can use this first manipulation again, A equals H cosine theta. So I'm gonna plug in A equals H cosine theta. So A is 3.20 cosine of 36.0 degrees, and that gives me 2.59, again, keeping three significant figures. I feel good about that answer, because A is definitely needs to be less than H, and in this case, H looks, A looks like it should be longer than O. All right, let's go ahead and take another, a look at another problem. So in this one, uh, let's once again start by labeling our angle and our sides. So again, the one that's measured in degrees, even though they don't give us yet, it yet, and measures this angle is going to be, we're gonna label that theta. My hypotenuse is my longest side. My adjacent side is the one that's touching the angle right here. So the angle again touches the hypotenuse and goes down to this adjacent side. And then the leftover one is my opposite side, O. All right, in this case, I was given A and O. So if we look at our equations, the equation that has A and O in it that I'm gonna start with is the Pythagorean theorem. So H squared equals A squared plus O squared. If you solve that for H, you'll get H equals the square root of O squared plus A squared. All right, so let me go ahead and write that down with the numbers plugged in. So I say H equals the square root of O squared, so 1.84 squared plus 2.29 squared. All right, and if I plug that into my calculator, I get 2.94. Once again, I feel good about my answer because I got something that's larger than A or O. All right, finally, to find our equation, our angle theta, you have a choice. Since we know all of our sides, we could use any of these equations that say theta equals. I tend to use what I was given originally, so I almost always use theta equals inverse tangent of O divided by A. So here, I'll write this O up here. Uh, theta equals inverse tangent of O divided by A, so 1.84 divided by 2.29. And if I plug that in, I get 38.8 degrees.